Put your hands together and celebrate the grace of God in the house. Dad is in the house, mom in the house. Let us celebrate the grace upon their life. Put your hands together and shout for the grace. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I now want to take this opportunity to welcome Dad. Dad is in the house. Welcome, Dad. Can you put your hands together as I bring our Father, the Lord, to feed us with the food? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Put your hands together. Celebrate. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and give him praise. He's worthy to be lifted today. He's worthy of your praise. He's worthy of your worship. Why it's not for the Lord that was on our side? Many of us will need to be here today. Why it's not by his grace, by his mercy? Many of us will not be standing on our feet. A lot has happened. But the Lord has proven to be God in our lives. If the Lord was not our God, when our enemies rose against us, we would have been swallowed alive. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we worship you, Lord. We Thank worship you, precious you. Jesus. We give you all the praise, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Happy Easter to everybody here. Happy Easter. Or oh, look at somebody in the eye and tell them Happy Easter, Happy Easter, Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Happy Hallelujah. Happy Easter. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Kindly take your glorious seats the praise of the Lord. We have some work to do tonight. And you are coming here is not in vain. You will carry something home glorious in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Or you feel here. God bless you. Amen. <clears throat> when people have weddings, a week or two before they begin to misbehave. Amen. They don't attend services. Papa, you know I'm busy running errands. As if you're the one marrying, we have not married before. For, for her to be here is such a honor. Put your hands for Jesus. I want to talk about something that I entitled The Journey of the Cross. The Journey of the Cross. We got to learn tonight. Are you ready? Are you ready? I believe life is full of lessons. And the faster you learn, the better for you. The slow you are in learning, the more you are delayed in life. Amen. Life is full of lessons. And if you are a fast learner, you not call, you not struggle with many things. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Amen. But if you can learn fast, the better for you. Now the journey of the cross started way before the formation of the world. And the world is created when the issue of the cross has been discussed, conclusions made, decisions made somebody died already by that time so when Jesus is coming to die is a manifestation of what has already happened amen I should not see this thing behaving like this on Sunday right okay are we together in Revelation chapter 5 verse 1 through verse 10 verse 1 through verse 10 Revelation Chapter number five. It says. It says. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside mm. and on the back mm -hmm. sealed with seven seals. Mm. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with loud voice, mm. "Who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose its seals?" Mm -hmm. And no one in heaven or on uh, on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll mm. or to look at it. Okay. So I wept much mm. because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll mm. or to look at it. Mm -hmm. 
But one of the elders said unto me, One of the elders said unto him, Do not weep. Do not weep. Behold, Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, mm. has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. Has volunteered to come and do the work. Verse 6. And I looked, mm -hmm. and behold, in the midst of the throne, and of the four living creatures, mm. and in the midst of the elders, mm. stood a lamb as though it had been slain, mm. having seven horns and seven eyes, mm. which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Mm. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Mm -hmm. Worthy is the mm. Now when he had taken the scroll, mm -hmm. the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, mm. each having a harp mm -hmm. and golden bowls full of incense, mm. which are the prayers of the saints. Which are the prayers of the saints. Mm -hmm. And they sang a new song saying, they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll. You are worthy to take the scroll. And to open its seals. Mm. For you were slain. For you were slain. And have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue mm. and people and nation. And have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, mm -hmm. the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, mm. and thousands of thousands, mm. saying with a, lo a loud voice, What is the Lamb? Who was slain to receive power and mm. riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. Amen. Uh, saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain. Why was he slain? To receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. Did you see poverty there? Did you see sickness there? Jesus is worthy to receive what? Blessings, riches, power, wisdom, when you hear somebody talking about a prosperity preacher, they don't know about Christ. Are you talking here? He's worthy to receive the best things. Now, that's not my topic today. Now, the Bible says he was slain before the foundations of the world. So, in what is happening in, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 27, chapter 27, chapter 28, is a manifestation of what John saw in a vision that happened before the world was formed. There was a meeting in heaven. And there, was, there were 24 elders. There were four living creatures. There were, there were things that have life. There were angels in their thousands and their thousands. And the Bible says, then there was a meeting to discuss who is going to open the seven seals. Who is going to deliver the world? Who is going to bring salvation? And everybody checked the price tag attached to what to, is to be done. And everybody bowed down their heads. And John said, and I behold and I cried. Because there was nobody to come and save the world. And then one of the elders, by, by miracle, by God's grace, whichever way, saw the Lamb of God that rose among many and said, I am going to do this. And he said, he has been slain before the foundation of the world. So Jesus is coming to the world to die physically for deliverance, for the manifestation of what has been done in the spirit. So the journey of Jesus dying did not start in Genesis, did not start in Matthew. It started before Genesis. And Jesus died before Genesis. Before the foundation. Meaning before the earth was formed, before the waters were separated, before the darkness and light were separated, Jesus had already died for us. But now there was need for the manifestation of what happened in the realms of the spirit. And that's why I'm praying in this season that you are also going to experience manifestation of what God said is going to do in your life. That a man is not in shalom. I say, I pray that there's going to be manifestation of every prophet life. So then, the journey of redemption continues to manifest from the day he was born. Now, we are talking about the manifestation of what was said. For it has already happened in the spirit. For we know anything that happens in the physical must have already happened in the spirit. Are we together now? Are we together now? So the plan grows stronger during his ministry life. And that's why they prophesied to us a child is born, to us is given, and to this is that will happen and that will happen. All these prophecies are now becoming manifested when he's physically born. 
but it had been done already in the spirit, revealed already, settled, and the end is already known. Am I communicating? And that's why even when Jesus was finding things were tough for him to face, he had no option but to follow it. Because there was already a prophetic word that it has to happen this way. Chapter 26, verse 1 of Matthew. Now let's go there. I pray today you will pick something. And this will walk with you through your entire life. Chapter 26, verse 1. We are reading through verse 2. Then we will skip to verse number 14. Verse 1 and verse number 2. It and says, it says, Now it came to pass. Now it came to pass. When Jesus had finished all these sayings, mm. that he said to his disciples, Okay. You know that after two days mm -hmm. is the Passover. Yes. And the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. You know, Jesus is talking to them as if he's talking about they know it. He's saying, You know. The word you know, meaning I'm reminding you. Is that, is that so? You know the Son of Man will be slain. Take it again, my daughter. You know that after two days... After two days from... Jesus was even particular. That was prophetic. That was what? Because he's even giving the day that you'll be, this will happen. And they have not written a letter to him that by this day we are coming for you. But he's prophesying. He's saying, you also know in two days as it were prophesied. The son of man will be... The son of man will be delivered up to be crucified. Will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people assembled at the palace mm -hmm. of the high priest who was called Caiaphas and plotted to take Jesus by trickery and kill him. They were thinking that they can tri do tricks and collect him, but they realized it was not easy. Take it, continue. But they said, But they said, Not during the feast, lest during there be an uproar among the people. In this season, if we do it, we are not going to succeed. And when Jesus was in Bethany, at the house of Simon the leper. Can I tell you something? Are you aware even the devil knows there are seasons he can't attack you? Oh, you're too quiet for me. Are you aware even the devil knows there are times he can't attack you? If you know how cults cannot sleep from yesterday, today, until Tuesday. Because they are trying to protect their territories. Because the transactions that are happening in the spirit now are very strong and they are aware. Now the danger is, us who are believers, we are very ignorant of the same. They know what we ought to have known. And they practice to their advantage what we should practice to our advantage. Ah, uh, the church is quiet now. We know now if we play tricks, we are not going to go by it. If we try it now, it's not going to succeed. And that's why the devil did not wait for Jesus to finish fasting. He visited him during fasting. Because he knows if I allow this man to finish, I will not catch him. Let me visit him at his vulnerable position. Oh, the church is too quiet for me. Because I know now if I'm dealing with him, I'm dealing with him, a man that is angry physically. So if I go, I don't talk about spiritual things, I talk about food. Ah. He did not go to the mountain to tell Jesus, if you, mm -mm. he says, sir, wait first. Can you turn this, you know, talk about food first. When you go to Rome, talk to Romans in a language they understand. Now let me leave that. <laughs> so the journey of the cross started when offer was made and a man by the name Judas accepted the offer. Give me verse 14 now. The same chapter, yes. But he answered him, but he not, answered and said, not one word. Not one word. So that the governor marveled greatly taking the place of Barabbas. Mm. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing to the multitude one prisoner whom they wished. <coughs> yes, we don't worry. Uh -huh. and, and at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. They had one who is very notorious by the name of Barabbas. Therefore, mm -hmm. then, they had gathered together. Mm. By you want me to release to you because I'm Barabbas for one. Jesus who is called Christ. Give us Barnabas. For he knew that they had handed him over because of envy. Mm. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him saying, have nothing to do with that just man for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. Now, all is there. Now Jesus knows about his death. He can see the future before the beginning. 
He knows what is going to happen before and after which event. And he has seen the video of the happenings from one to, 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 to the last number. So then, he comes prophetically and he begins to talk to them and tell them, I know for certainty, in two days from now, which is 48 hours, the Son of Man shall be taken up. And they shall do this, they shall do that, they shall do this, they shall do that. But I know this will happen this way and that way. In verse 26 now, he comes and initiate communion. And he, tell, he take the bread and he take the cup and he break it and bless it and give it to them. And he's saying, I want you to take this because this is the last time I'm doing this with you. I remember it was the first and the last one. Are we together now? And he did not talk about the first and the last. He only said this is the last one. Meaning there were many communion they were taking together with Jesus without knowing. There cannot be a last one if there was not the first one. Oh, the church is so quiet for me. There cannot be the last one if there was no first one. So Jesus is not telling them this is the last and the first. Mm -mm, Jesus is saying this is the last one. Meaning there was a first one they did in ignorance. If I have time on Sunday, I will take you there. Are we together here? So something happened that money was introduced. Hmm. And once money is introduced, every man, every woman loses control. And a man that has been with Jesus for many years, for many times, was given an offer and accepted. And that's how and by the grace of God, I believe strongly among the women and the men that were very instrumental in the ministry of Jesus Christ, Judas Iscariot, to me, is number one. The best man in your life. Listen, don't look at it. I'm the one who spoke. Are you together here? I believe strongly that the best person in your life is a woman or a man that betrays you to push you to your next level. Oh no, the church is not happy now. Because when we see a betrayer, we feel bad. But in most cases, the most important person in your life is the man or the woman that betrays you so that that betrayer can push you to the prophetic destiny. Oh, I thought I'm talking like I feel it here. Jesus came to die. Are we together now? And we have seen it from the beginning that Jesus was supposed to do what? To die. And he was born to die. And his death was supposed to be the death of the cross. Prophetically written, he knows it, everybody knows it. That is it. But now a man that presented himself to help him have it, to me, I call that man destiny helper. So sometimes we pray, Father, I need a destiny helper. Hello? And the woman that comes in your life and betrays you. A man appears in your life and betrays you and you begin to curse them. Not knowing that not all betrayers are betrayers. Some come to push you. I thought I should talk like I feel it here. Some come to push you to go to where you belong. One of the most important people in Jesus' life is Judas Iscariot. Because he's the man that helped Jesus' destiny to be realized. But there is another version of it. When money is introduced, loyalty is by force. Oh, I thought I'm talking to this age. When money is introduced, loyalty is what? <laughs> I thought I said something. There is no loyalty 100% that a poor woman, a poor man receives from a man, fellow human being. Is rare until man is introduced. Judas was a believer, was a disciple that believed and honored Jesus. By the day money was introduced, his loyalty shifted. He was loyal to Jesus Christ, but now he began to be loyal to somebody else because money became was introduced. But I want us to learn some few lessons before we pray. Today we are sharing the body of Christ, and because a lot I'm doing on Sunday, there are lessons to learn about this journey of the cross. Number one lesson. Number one lesson. Number one lesson. In most cases, the people that will betray you are your closest people. But get used to it. A stranger can't betray you. How does it sound? It has to be somebody very dear, very close to you. That is when it is betrayal. 
when it is done by somebody who is afar off, it's not betrayal. It becomes betrayal when the person betraying you is in your cycle. What we call best friend. No, the church is not happy now. Because you don't thought, you, don't, you have never thought about it that dimension. That is one thing you need to know. When they wanted Jesus offered to them, they did not go for people that were in the outer court. They came to people who were very close. Judas was the treasurer in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, you are not here. Are you here? Judas was the treasurer in the ministry of Jesus Christ. And a treasurer must be somebody trusted by the boss. Are we together here? And they know we are going for the best. And the man that is handling money, he understands the language of money. So if I want somebody that we can do business with, let me look for somebody who already is touching money. So when we talk about 10,000 silver, you know the value. Ah! Very quickly, palm, we have him. People that God will also use to push you. Sometimes, let me tell you, not every betrayer is devil sent. Some betrayers are God sent. Am I complicating here? I will show you some things. No, don't, don't be surprised when you see somebody too close betray you. No, don't be surprised. The pain is felt when the betrayer is too close. The pain is not felt when the betrayer is far off. And because the intention of the lesson is for you to have the pain, the betrayer must come close. Oh, I thought I'm teaching somebody here. Lesson number two. You have got some lessons to learn here. Are you ready? Are you ready? Number two. The people you have left, you have helped most in life are the ones who will promote your downfall. Learn this. The people you have helped most are the ones that will help and promote your downfall. Peter said, sir, where you die, I shall die. Where you go, I shall go. When they slap you, they will slap me. If they talk against you, they will talk against me. That one happened before Jesus was arrested. And do you know what motivated Peter to talk like that? He must have encountered help from this man. For him to begin to talk like this. For a friend to tell you, my sister, I will stand with you to the end. There is something that friend I've seen in you. Or am I talking here? For Peter to tell Jesus, me, Peter, I'm on your side, sir. If they want to arrest you, the same man cough. One hand will be mine, one hand will be yours. Am I talking here? Am I communicating here? They will not put your two hands. Mm, they will uncuff us with the same handcuff. My hand and your hand. Because of where we have come from. The day the real handcuff came, Peter saw something. I said, Peter, where? Me? You know me before? <laughs> you, me, Peter, you know my name? Sir, so you know my name? Hey! Me, Peter, you know my name? From where? Peter, what we know with you? Where? Where were we? <laughs> are you not the one that said we are going to be? Say me, saying to you, open my dead body. I was not there. Waka for your head. The people you have helped most will promote your downfall. The beauty of life is master it as early as now and get used to it. I've been betrayed by sons I've laid hands on and daughters I've laid hands on. I prayed for a young man in this ministry who used to sleep in the altar who I later felt cold will kill a son of somebody in my church. And they will say I use it for ritual. So I said, let me go and take him to sleep in my house. He was sleeping in my coach. He's one of the people that made my coach look the way it was looking. Then I rented a house for him. See the journey. This is a man that a girlfriend chased out of his house. Then I picked as a prophet. Slept on the altar. Slept on my coach. Slept on, and then later rented a house for him. Married him. Wedded him. Ordained him a pastor. 
and looked at my, me at the eye and said, you're not a prophet. On Monday this week, the brother called me from Nakuru. He's saying, man of God, if you don't help that, my brother, as we are talking now, they are separating with the wife. The wife is proposing for a divorce. But I remain, I'm not a true prophet again. The same thing I prophesied, which made them leave my church, is already happening. And they said, I'm not a prophet of God. But I told him, if you're not careful, this woman is leaving you. Now the brother is the one calling me from the village. If you don't help my brother, the woman is leaving him. When I said it, I was not a man of God. <laughs> so I told the brother, now he doesn't have my name again. So, <laughs> Robert, you don't see plenty. My eyes have seen my ears. Am I going to get somebody here? Listen. People that you have invested your life in them are the ones who will promote your downfall. And we are learning this because of the life of Jesus Christ to what happened to him. Number three, lesson to learn tonight. Number three, lesson to learn tonight. Your life will not remain the same. I say your life will not remain the same. At your lowest level, your time of trouble, you will need people to stand with you. There is no, there is no island. In your lowest level, you will need people to stand with you in prayer. No man is an island. Everybody needs somebody. Even Jesus needed somebody. In this life, there is nobody who is self-made. Everybody needs somebody. 26 verse 36 of Matthew through verse 37. 26 36 of Matthew through verse 37. In life, there are times when you can be on your lowest. You will need people to help you. Nobody's an island. Everybody needs help. Even Jesus Christ needed somebody when he was in his low, lowest. Check it. 26 verse 36. It says, it says, Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane uh -huh. and said to his disciples, He said to his disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. Sit here while I'm going higher to pray. And he took with him Peter uh -huh. and the two sons of Zebedee uh -huh. and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. He, after carrying them with him, he began to be sorrowful and distressed. So as a believer, the fact that sometime in life you are distressed doesn't mean you're not born again. Yes. If Jesus could be sorrowful and distressed as a, as a God in man flesh, then us, we can be sorrowful as well. At that moment, don't keep it to yourself. Let there be somebody to stand with you in prayer. The challenge you have with believers is that when things are tough for you, you run away from church. Why did you come? Why were you not coming to church on Sunday? Man of God, I did not come because I was stressed. I just felt I need to stay alone. Hello? Jesus never, never did that. You, that's when you need some people with you. But the problem is when we have some issues dealing with us, that's the time we run away from brethren. I just want to lock myself, man of God. I just wanted to pray in my house. I did not want anybody. There are times in life you cannot even pray. Don't deceive yourself. You will lock yourself in the house. The thing you will do, you will be crying. You need somebody outside the door that is locked who can be praying for the one who is crying. Oh, I thought I'm talking to somebody here. Am I communicating here? Yes. But what we do is that when things are tough, we run away from people. And now you, when you run away from us, when you kill yourself. The Bible says Jesus sensed the season is not friendly. He collected three people that were very close to him. Then he said to them. And he told them something. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful. My soul is exceeding problem. Even to death. I'm even feeling like I can die. Stay here and watch with me. Please stay here and watch with me. The word watch meaning God with me. Oh, I thought I'm talking here. The word watch means God with me because I feel like I'm dying. I'm in my lowest. So I pulled you out of 12 because I trust you. Ha! Leave it there. Learn a lesson. A time is coming in life when things will be tough for you. You must have people you can run to. Tell them, brethren, I feel where I am. I can die anytime. I need a woman, a man like you, that can raise their voices in the spirit for my sake. There are times you try to pray, your mouth is just vibrating. No one can come out from your mouth. But somebody who is sober can stand in the gap for you. 
and tell God, look at your daughter, look at your son. Am I communicating with somebody here? This is life. You stand alone, you die alone. I told a pastor friend of mine, sir, the reason why I try to bring people close to me, I met a bishop yesterday in Kitengela who told me, sir, I respect what the Lord is doing in your life. But one thing that breaks me whenever I see you is that I don't see a proud young man. Because many pastors of your age today, you cannot call them and they pick. And they were running my line. Is there anybody who has called me and it was somebody else speaking? And they weren't talking. How many do do that? You're already bigger than your status. And he told me, sir, remain humble. God is taking you far. And I knelt down and I told him, Bishop, speak a word. He said, I cannot pray for you. Because the reason I called you here is for you to pray for me. I said, sir, you should pray. He said, no, you will not pray, sir. I cannot allow you to kneel in my office. And I, I, I stood up. So he knelt down. I said, I will, not lay, I will not lay my hand on you also. He said, no, this hand is the reason why I brought you here. There is something that God said once you lay this hand, it will happen. So I prayed, we finished. So as I was leaving, I'm doing my fasting. So he brings some juice for me to drink. I said, I will not drink your fasting. So he called his secretary because he's running a school within the church and gave me a seed of 5,000 shillings. He said, man of God, we value the grace in your life. Many of us, little breakthrough like this one. You blue tick me already. Just a little breakthrough like this. You blue tick me. <laughs> That's it. That's a little breakthrough. Ah! Am I communicating now? We tell your neighbor, learn in this life. Number four. Number what? Even the mighty men and women you admire and at times be worried and stressed. This is a lesson we are learning through the ministry of Jesus and what happened to him. Even the women and men that you admire, sometimes they are stressed. Sometimes they are depressed. Oh, I, I, I hope I hope one day I can sing like Sinaj. Oh, how I wish God can take me to where she has come to. If you can be close to her and she opens up to you, you can realize the demon she is handling. Sometimes are even stronger than your own demons. Sometimes the people we admire, they also go through even worse than what we go through. So when you see them go through it, what is the lesson? Don't be discouraged that no. No. Be careful. Tell God so I am even in a better place. Because battles that God allows to come your way, make you a better person. I believe in God that there's no battle you can allow to come to my life that will never make me sharper than I was. That can make me better than I was. Everything I've ever gone through in life is to release the better version of me. Am I communicating here? <laughs> what do we learn, number four? Thank you, Jesus. Number five, right? Even your role models, there was a point they almost gave up. Even those that you call my role model, there is a point in their life they almost gave up. Give me verse 39 of the same verse, verse 26, chapter 26, verse 36. 26 verse 39, sorry, 39 now. Even people that you take like this, my role model, there was a time in their life when they were pursuing their greatness. They were almost giving up. So when you feel like giving up, you are in the right direction. Don't give up. Yes, you are feeling it's, no, it's correct. It's not, it's not wrong for you to get there. People have been there before. But the thing is, what do you do with that status? Will you really practically give up? Or will you stand the test of time? 26 verse 39. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, He went a little further and fell on his face, praying and saying, Oh, my father, my father, if it is possible, if it were possible, let this car pass from me. Let this pass. Nevertheless, yeah. 
Let it pass. Not as I will, but as you will. Let it pass. Not as I will, but as you will. Meaning, if it were in my will, I will not take off this cup. That, uh, that man is talking like a man that is giving up. Hello? It's a man that wants to throw towel. If it is possible, and he laid on his face, he did not kneel down. He did not pray with his hands lifted. He, he went to the ground. Father, if it were possible. So even the people that sometimes you regard this, my, 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 my whatever. Are we together here? There was a time in life when they were almost breaking down. They were almost throwing towel. There was a time in life when they felt, if this is what God can allow me to go through, I better die. Are you aware there was a time Elijah prayed a prayer? And Elijah told God, I will not die in the hands of Jezebel. I better you kill me here. I better die than die in the hands of that woman. The same man that made prophets of Baal in their thousands killed is running away from one woman. Ah, life, oh, life, oh. Ah. The same Elijah that called fire from heaven is now telling God, kill me because this woman is going to kill me. There is no great man that at some point has never been in their lowest. So the lesson is this. If Jesus did went through this one, Robert can go through it. You can go through it. A time comes when everybody leaves you. Everybody. Until you feel the absence of the presence of God. Until you feel the absence of God. There are times when everybody, including the presence of God, you feel the absence. I will show you the Bible. Number six, write it down. I hope somebody's learning tonight. Number six, don't fight those who betrayed you. If they did it wrongly, they will hang themselves. Your betrayers will hang themselves. If anybody betrayed you in a wrong dimension, don't fight them back. Such betrayers, they usually hang themselves. 27 verse 3 of the same Matthew through verse 6. 27 verse 3 of Matthew through verse 6. If a man was not used of God to betray you, the devil sent him to betray you. Those ones don't fight them. Once you just speak that this job I'm losing because of this sister, and she has decided, or, he, or this brother has decided from her own reasons, or his own reasons, to see me suffer, don't fight them. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? You see to it. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. What did he do? Hanged himself. He returned the money that was given. After returning the money, he went and hanged himself. Now the question is, why was he even collecting money in the first place? The money that did not help him, he even returned the money. And hanged himself. So meaning he later came to himself and regretted his actions. And then he died by himself. Those betrayers will die by themselves. Am I communicating here? Any woman, any man, that vows that you will go down, that swears by his blood that you go down, that says over their dead bodies, will you succeed? Is for sure they will die for your success. I said they will die for your success. They will die for your success. Judas collected money to betray Jesus. Money that never helped him. Number seven thing to learn. Many people today fear to do the right thing because of the public opinion. Because of what? Public opinion. 27 verse 19 of the same Matthew. Many people fear to do the right thing because of public opinion. What will people say? How will people see me? How will people take me? How will people regard me? How will they talk about me? 27. While he was sitting on the judgment seat. While the man was seated on the judgment seat, he wanted to judge Jesus Christ. His wife sent to him saying. His wife wrote a note to him saying. Have nothing to do with that just man. Don't try to put your hands on that man's life. For I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. If you know what I saw in the night because of that man, don't try to judge that man anyhow. 
my husband, I want to advise you, be careful. The man you are about to put your nose in is smart and a dangerous man, no. Be careful because my children's life are at stake. Our destiny of, in this house is at stake. Be careful. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask of Barabbas and ah, destroy Jesus. But because of fear of what people will say, he still did it. The governor, the governor answered and said to them, you which of the two uh -huh. do you want me to release to you? They said Barabbas. Mm. Pilate said to them, Did he say that to them, what then shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? Uh -huh. They all say to him, let him be crucified. Let him be crucified. Then the governor said, he said why, that, why that evil has he done? What is it that he has done? But they cried out all the more saying, let him be crucified. Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, when he saw he cannot challenge the public, but rather that a multitude, a tumult was rising, mm. he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, "I am innocent of the blood of this just person." You he see was, to it. He was washing his hand as a sign of saying, "What I'm doing here, I'm not part of it. I'm just doing it because the public opinion has pushed me." And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us on, and on our children. Let His blood be on us and our children. Now I want to tell you a mystery there. Hold it there. Hold it there. Hold it there. Do you think when the blood of Jesus is upon you and your children you are cast? Or you are missing it? We thought when they said, Let His blood be upon us and our children, that they are collecting curses. Ha! Ah! You have the blood of Jesus upon you in your generation. You are blessed to, the, to your teeth. Ah. Let this blood be upon us and our children. No wonder Israel is blessed till today. It's one of the nations that is in the wilderness. But if you see agriculture, they do even Africa. We can't do it. Some of them don't know how rain looks like. Here, even yesterday or yesterday, but one, some of us here, we saw rain. They said, let his blood be upon us. We don't understand the Bible from that perspective. We think that when with Jesus, they said, let the blood of Jesus be upon us. They were talking about curses. How can the blood of Jesus be upon you and your family and you still operate under a curse? Is it not the blood that we plead when there are curses? Is it not the blood we cry to when there are problems? Is it not the blood that we plead when things are not working? Africans, with, they, with them they took blood, we took the cross. You know the man that helped Jesus to carry the cross? It was an African man. And that's why you see, if you see the way an African man is preaching, the way we pray in Africa, even white people, white people cannot match it. We take the matters of the cross very serious. You have not seen prayer, visit Ghana. People think Nigerians, they pray. Ask me when I was in Ghana. We, I brought Apostle Daniel here, and I'll bring him this year if God gives us grace for next year. The way you pray, ask Pastor God. We pray for two hours. When you finish prayer, you, this one, they are burning you. You, are <laughs> you pray and you clap your hands. Every demon must, must, con must be conquered. The way we take matters of the cross serious is because we are the ones who felt the weight of the cross, or you are not feeling it. It is African men that felt the weight of the cross. The Jews, they felt the blood. And that's why they don't believe in Jesus, but the blood is upon them and their children. Ah, you are not hearing. You are not hearing. Ah, you are not hearing. You are not hearing. You, do you know in Jew, 90% don't believe in Jesus as Christ? But do you know in Israel, they are still favored in the world? God is still identifying with them as their own because the blood is upon them. Ah, I thought I'm talking to somebody here. They say, let the blood be upon us in our generation. You take the cross. So we are busy preaching. We are looking for how to go and preach to them. Them who. And that's why if Jesus comes today, some of them will go to heaven without proclaiming salvation. Because the blood is upon them. The judge is not happy again. Are you following what I'm saying now? Are you aware there are people in Israel that doesn't believe Jesus is the Christ? Are you aware there are people that don't believe he's the Messiah? You, you believe already. <laughs> Cap. 
Abraha le Mahadin Salamani. Ask your neighbor, are you learning? Ask them, are you learning? Many people, even in church, fear to do the right thing because people, what would I come and go to Kimbele Mbele Zana? Hello? Last time, in the final, I said, Mama, I'm going to Mbele. I'll be here, I said, Juicy, I said, Mama, I'm going to go to Mbele. Hello? Short fire. You feel, and the Lord has directed you to do, but you feel, if I do, what will people? What will people? And you are convicted in your spirit as you do this. If I buy a man of God a nice suit now, will, how will people take me? Let me buy first. Then you take me how you want to take me. Now, up to you now. Am I in your mind? <laughs> Am I in your mind? You think you are thinking, let me think my thing, let me do my things. The woman who wants the man, don't put your hand in that matter. Because I can see where you are sitting, I know how you can judge people. In that throne where you have seen, you can judge this man anyhow. Be careful, I saw something in my dream. But because of fear of the public opinion, he still did it. How many of us know the right thing, but we cannot do it because of what we will say? If I marry that man, how will people take me? Are you marrying that man for people? Oh, the judge is now quiet now. The judge is now quiet, isn't it? <laughs> He's eating hard, isn't it? How will people take me if I go to that church? Me, go to that church, me. Go to that church, how? And I tell my friends, this is my church, how? Me, how? How will people take me? Is it about people? Is it about my breakthrough? Is it about people? Is it about my life? Oh, I thought I'm teaching some people here. When the Lord spoke to me to follow him, I was an altar boy in Catholic Church. We were enjoying the wine with the Reverend Father by the grace of God. Hallelujah. No, you are not, you are not happy now. <laughs> the way you are chopping that wine, only God is aware. <laughs> So when they told me there is Christ, there is salvation, I said, what is that? We don't get born again. We don't born again before. This good Friday, something good is coming into your life. Oh, I spoke to somebody. I said, this good Friday, something good is coming into your life. Something good is coming into your life, into your family, into your finances into your business, into your career, shout I receive it. Never you fear doing the right thing because what will people say? Are we talking here? As far as what you're about to do is the right thing, do it. Is God part of it? Do it. The same people that you used to judge if I do, they will say this. The same people remember, regardless, they will still say something. Regardless of what you do, they will still say. Ah, if I marry this man, how will people take me? If you don't marry him, how will they take you also? If I go to that church, how they will they take me? If you stay in that church, how will they take you? Do you know even now as you are talking, this is how they've been taking you? It's only that you're not aware. The, the church is now not happy. <laughs> Do you know if there is how they're already taking you now? <laughs> Glory to God. Something is happening in your life. It's not going to, it's not going to take time from now before it's fully manifested. I say it's not going to take time from now before it is fully manifested. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number six or number seven? Number eight. The people that praise you today, the same people, may characters is meet you tomorrow. The same mouth that sing your praise, that mouth can sing your downfall tomorrow. Lord 
unto God forever. Number eight or number nine. Sometimes we go through painful moments to fulfill our prophecies. Oh yes. Sometimes we go through painful moments to fulfill our prophecies. 27 verse 35. 27 verse 35. 27 verse 35 of Matthew. 27 verse 35 of Matthew. Sometimes we go through painful situations to release the bad thing of our prophecy. Then they crucified him. Then they crucified him. And divided his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. That it might be fulfilled that which was prophesied by the prophet. They but, they were, but they were removing clothes from him, leaving a messiah naked on the cross. That is shame. Oh, you are not hearing me. No, no, you're not hearing me. They were busy removing his clothes, tearing it apart, taking pieces of the clothes. Are you following what I'm saying here? And by when people remove clothes from you and you're hanging on the cross, you are helpless. You cannot cover yourself. Am I communicating? You are exposed. And that happened. The Bible says that the prophecy may what? Be fulfilled. Check it again. Then they crucified him. Then they crucified him on the cross. After crucifying him, hands and his legs are already tied. He cannot help himself. And divided if, his garments. If he's a woman or he's a man, he cannot cover his private parts. Are, are you following what I'm saying here? Are you following what I'm saying here? Because his hands are already what? Crucified on the cross. So after putting his hands on the, on the cross, he cannot save himself. That's when now they tear his clothes in pieces and begin to share. Why were they doing that? That the prophecy given by the prophet may what? Be fulfilled. I want to submit to you. There are pains you go through to bring back your, your prophecy. Not every pain you go through is to torment and bring you down. There are some pains that God allow into your life to help your prophecy being fulfilled. But when we see pain, we give up. When we see pain, we, we throw hands. And sometimes pain comes when you're very helpless. Have you realized you had some money after the money has been spent? That's when your child is becoming sick. We don't have any money to take the child to the hospital again. But while you had money that could take care of that, there was no problem. Once the man disappeared like that, that's when somebody who you, want, you need to help is calling you, my son, save me with 10K. That you say, my son, I just had 20K in the morning. Uh -uh, I would have saved you now. <clears throat> and then now the friend is beginning to say, now you see now, when I was well, I was helping you. Now that you are okay, now you cannot help me again. It's not that the friend doesn't help you. Something just happened a few minutes before. And sometimes you're just genuine. Maybe God wants your eye to be removed from that friend. Or oh, you're not here. Maybe you have been, your eye has been stuck on that friend. Maybe God wants to remove your focus from that friend. And begin to focus correctly. Not every time you go through pain is from the devil. Somebody shout I hear. Well, I hope somebody's learning. Shout I hear. Number 10 or number 11. Number 10. At some point in life, God can leave you. Oh, I know theologians want to argue with me. I'm a theologian by the grace of God. Amen. <clears throat> I have a bachelor's degree in theology and mission. So I'm, I'm not talking from ignorance. Are we talking here? There are times God can just let you be there. We know you never leave me nor forsake me. Jesus. Hello? <laughs> Look at your neighbor. Ask them, sure. 27 verse 46 of the same Matthew. Let me show you some Bible. 46 of chapter 27. 46 chapter 27. I'm meaning chapter 27 verse 46. I know there are visitors there. You'll be confused with how I say it. 20, 27, 46. Are we together? And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, About which hour? Ninth. About the ninth hour. Jesus cried aloud. Saying, saying Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Ah. That is my God, my God, why have you so forsaken me? Holy there. Do you want to tell me Jesus confused his words? 
But not God not forsaken, he was just confused. The words written here were inspired by the Spirit of the Lord. So if this was not for our edification, the Spirit would have not allowed this word to be authored. Hello? There are times in life that God wants to expose you. I say God sometimes offends to, to expose. Hello? God will offend to expose what's in your heart. You come back by yourself. <laughs> my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? If you want to teach your child how to feed themselves, look at me now. You sometimes give them food and allow them to mess around. Watakula na watafue kila kitu yu area, but you will not be offended because you know they are learning. If you didn't want them to mess that place, you will give them food. Hello? Utamlisha, is that true? But there is a time unaona kama huyu mtuta madame efika nisipo muacha anze kujifundisha kula, itamlisha forever. So utamweka hapo na chakula, na umuambie kachini, mama ama baba kula. Alafu atanza kula, mara na chena, chakula, amepaka na nyuele, amerusha huko, amepaka. But you will not take offense because you have left that child to learn. Hello? And sometimes, ukiwa na mtu na mfunisha kutembea, utamtembeza mdanganyi umemshika, ifike mahali umuachilie. Sometimes, paka anaanguka, not because you are punishing the child, because you want them to learn how to walk on, them, on their own. Now, wala, uh, am I talking to somebody here? And sometimes, when we were, we were learning how to ride a bicycle, mwenye na kusaidia nyuma na kwambia, tuende, tuende na kuba jeshika, hello? Is that true? Alafu time, uta realize, hakuna muta meshika, unastuka, unanguka. But before you do it, come on, I tell you, to visit. That is life. When you know somebody is holding on you, you become careless. When you know you are left alone, you become. Ke- uh. So you only go and because you depended on the man that was holding it. Okay, there are times God wants to allow you to be stable, because God also depends on you to deliver you. Ah, Robert, I don't know this too much. Ah, uh, Robert, this is too much. Because even God depends on you to deliver you. God knows there are things I cannot do on earth without you. So I need you to accomplish my prophecy on your life. So you are an agent of your deliverance. But if you continue like this, you are not going to be delivered. So I must expose you to be matured. So that when I can't, I'm not talking here. So I, you, can, you can help me to do this thing. The way we need God, God needs us. Look at your neighbor, tell them, God need you to deliver you. Tell them, God need you to help you. God need you to set you free. Am I communicating here? So because God wants you to come to the place whereby he can walk with you very easily, he can expose you for some time. So he can see how you can be messy around. How you can behave around. Are you just behaving well because I'm around? If I step my feet out of your area, what will you do? Are you going to say now that God has left me, I'm going to join a cult? Wangapo wamekasirika wakacha kanisa na wakacha wukovu na wakacha mungu wa sababu ya mimi wa uyo mungu alikuwa wapi mtu wangu wakipo mgonjwa. One of my cousin Bibiaka alikuwa na mimba ikatoka nine times. Akaburi kukunywa pombe. Na niko wa mungelecha kaniambia lazimu tanijibu mungu alikuwa wapi nine times bibiangu mimba ikitoka. And I was born again and I was speaking in tongues. Nilikuwa naenda kanisa, nilikuwa kiongozi kanisani. If you don't answer me that question, I'm not going back to church. Now you are forgetting sometimes God can allow that to happen so that you, there is where he wants to bring you. Imagine Abraham is over 90 years. Abraham is over 90 years. Na baada ya kona guts ya kwa mini mungu. Na ana mtoto. 90 plus. Na kona guts ya kusema God will. Hey! You are at 40. You're already cursing God. Waka for his head. Where was he when I was 28? <laughs> Abraham was carrying a prophecy when Lot was fighting him. 
Am I communicating? The same Abraham is the one who went and rescued Lot after Lot is now being messed around with the people in, in Sodom and Gomorrah. The same Abraham. What's the lesson now? Read it for me, somebody. The last one. The one I gave very quickly. I just want to know if you're writing correctly. At some point in life, God can leave you. Matthew As, 27, 46. At some point, God can just let you be. Are you trying to come on by you? Just for some few minutes, for some few days, some few hours. I only how you can react. God offend to expose. After what God did to the children of Israel, the Bible said, Walifika Mali Wakasema, after that, we to go to Pate Mali Akuzi Kwa Egypt. Hello? Now remember, Waliuliza Musa Swalimoja. Kwani Mali Pamazishi to Likosa? No, you are not listening to what I'm preaching here. Because Waliona Kama Munga Yuko Kwa Mamayao Zaza. Ima to make up a Musa and Tuambianga Yungu Yuko, like in a Tumoni Mali, able to Jibu. Kule Atuke Zikwa. God wanted to offend them to expose what is on, on their heart. Sometimes what God wants to know your heart before he blesses you. So he exposes you to misbehave. That he can tell, are you going to remain loyal? Are you going to misbehave? Before I bless you, will you drive that range over to this church? You know, there are places you don't take your Mercedes. It's a big thing. Mercedes is expensive. My S500, me. I know where to go to church now. It's only that now I'm managing with Robux. <laughs> I, am I complicating here? But I, I know where to go when God begins to do things. Now, once God locate that in your spirit, you, are, you will wait there. You will wait there. You keep is that your Probox? Is if you can, <laughs> you come with it in Jesus' name. May you be found worthy when exposed to such kind of tempt. Are we together here? If a test like that come your way, may you be proved worthy. Amen. Number ten, number eleven, or number twelve. People won't believe in your God till they see what your God is doing in your life. People won't believe in your God till they see what that God is doing into your life. 54. Take me to verse 54 now. The same, same chapter 27. People won't believe in your God until they see what that God is doing in your life. Matthew 27 verse 54. 27, 54. It says, it says, how then could the scripture be fulfilled that it must happen thus? So, so when, 54, verse 27, he said, mine said, so when the centurion and the weave, that those were with him, oh, yes. please read it correctly. Number 54. Yes. It says, it says, so when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. Now they feared and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. After seeing the things that happened, now they feared the Lord and they opened their own mouth and said, Surely, this was a daughter of God. It is for sure this woman was born again. It is for sure this man was born again. It is for sure what they were saying was true. After they have seen, and that's why I'm praying this month of April, a month of tokens and signs. That may there be a sign and a proof that God is on your side. I say, may there be a proof and a sign that the Lord is on your side. Something that will make people that were thinking against you to say for sure the Lord is on their side. After they saw what is happening, that's when they talked. There are things if you don't see in your life, you, if you like, you read the whole Bible, you can go to hell with it, they don't care. When they see God, pa, they say, now this woman is having God. I'm praying for a sign in your life. I'm praying for a sign in your life. I'm praying for a sign in your life. Do you know even your family doesn't believe you 100%? Oh, now you're not happy again. Do you know even your family people, they don't believe you well? 
nimeenda kanisa mwisho tulikuwa na maombi oh kuna good friday service oh oh you need to know our prophet is very powerful that your powerful prophet what has he done hello you know our papa is very powerful and they are saying oh he's very powerful and you are like this and you want me to follow you somebody shout fire shout fire also your church is very powerful my man of god is very anointed oh oh he's very anointed and your life is like this and me you want me to join you in suffering fire no you don't like me again now hello there is a how god visits your life galaba la hadala malina kata i feel something in this house there's a week god just about to sakata hadizabala without you talking they begin to talk about your own god said when he turned the captivity of Zion even them themselves they were like those that are dreaming that is the level when God am I talking to somebody here a level even with yourself you are worried is it me the dimension of blessing is too much I know I prayed for a car but I did not think it can be Rolls Royce I know I was am I talking here I prayed for a marriage but I did not know we can do it in Sicilians but you don't know it can come like this is it me for sure is it me i thought the father said can go is mombasa but now your wedding is in dubai no you only the invited only thank god i will come me i will even if you are doing it in, the, in ohio am i coming getting here I declare may something be released in your life. I declare may something be released in your life that people around you will know you serve a living God. I say may people know you serve a living God. Sit down. Number 12 or number 13? 12. The lesson number 12, the body of Christ is in shame hanging naked on the cross. The body of Christ is in shame hanging naked on the cross. We need rich people to remove the shame from the body of Christ. The body of Christ is in shame hanging there on the cross naked, clothes removed, people have shared. We need the rich people in this generation to remove the body of Christ from that shame. 27 verse 57 of Matthew. 57 now. Take me to verse 57. Let me talk like a feel it here. Now when evening had come, in the evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea. In the life of a human being there are three sessions. There is a morning, there is the midday, and there's the evening. Are we together? Yes. Evening is the last hour of the day. Yes. Are we together? Yes. So meaning when the end times come like now, that is the interpretation. Are we together now? Yes. When the evening has come, meaning when we have come to the end time like now now continue there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph the bible Joseph, is recognizing that this man was rich who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus had become a disciple he was not, not a rich man who was out there a rich man that had been converted and is now a disciple this man went to pilate and asked for the body of Jesus he went to pilate to ask for the body of Jesus hold it there it takes a rich man to have guts to face the president Then Pilate oh, no, hold, hold the hold there, hold there. It takes a rich man to have the guts to say who is the MC in this area. It takes a rich man to say who is the OCPD of this area. Because the kind of the car you land with, even the OCPD said bring him, I want to see him. You came from a bike. Go, 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 your hands on your head and shout mercy. It he went to ask for the body of Christ, take it there now. So he can go and bury in his tomb because he is the only man that was able to afford a tomb for himself. A poor man under langata. This man went to Wendo yake huko mlipe 700. Inaonga mia ngapi? Poa tuliamba bana tusahau mambo yake. Asiwe kutusumbua hapa. Eh eh. This bird went to Pilate. Eh. 
and asked for the body of Christ. Yes. Then Pilate commanded the body to be given to him. Because Pilate also know this man, a rich boy, you. No be once more, yeah, yeah. Hello? If you ask for money, you can pay. Uh -huh. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. Hold it there, hold it there. He took the body after being given and wrapped it in a lean, clean linen. Do you, can you afford linen? Even today, do you think linen is cheap? He work. Are you talking? How many people are wearing linen now? Once we see you in linen, we know you are left. He was the man that could afford the linen for a messiah. Not cotton wool. Not one year, yeah. Hello? Poly polyester. <laughs> eh? You know, this one is synthetic. Leave those nonsense. We need something real. Come out the Messiah with the linen. Very expensive. Continue. And laid it, in, laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. And he, he rolled he, a large he, stone. He took the body of Christ in his tomb. In his tomb. Wacha hii unaonanga kwa TV wenye wako na njaa wameka wameka fika na Mungu. Eti Mungu amejitimbia kaburi. Hata ukiona mwenye anajitimbia kaburi hata wewe unamwonea huruma. Eti mtu kusima aligana alikuwa anajitimbia kaburi aikufa siku hapo. Na ukiona mwenye anachimba kaburi anasema na huyu. Yule kama ametoka na maisha huyu. <laughs> Serikali saidia. Ile mama alikuwa anasema huko Nyando. Serikali saidia. Nasema correct. Saidia ni mimi. The body of Christ is in shame today. The body of Christ did a rich woman a rich man that can step out with their wealth and say we will not allow the church of God to be exposed. The reason why today pastors are going to beg for money with, in, to, to government people is because pastors are poor and they, they have nothing. A normal MCA is doing a meeting and all pastors are going there with caller. Ah! Because Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen pastors going to state house without caller? Muko 50 pastors, 100 pastors na caller. What time nana kubiri? Because caller will qualify you for a thousand shillings. That's why when pastors now go to them, they cannot talk. Once you have food in your mouth, it's a good discipline. You don't talk when food is in your mouth. Ingi ona pelo fomoji na kachi, na pelo fomoji na kachi, na pelo fomoji na kachi. Amu na ambiwa mukima lisa kila mtu ndapita ile mlango. So you don't talk careless here because you don't give you don't give you anything. You see, men of God, you respect. They have become boys. They cannot talk again. Order is this. It is the prophetic that installed the royalty. When God wants to make a king, he would send a prophet or send the king to the prophet. From the beginning, when God wants to give Israel a king, he never sent a prophet to the king. He sent the king to the prophet. And that's how Saul was anointed. And the next time God sent Saul into the house of, 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 David, of, of, of Jesse to go anoint a king, it is prophets that put the kings in power. So it's the kings that should beg prophets. But prophets are begging kings. The order has changed because of anger in the body of Christ. Pastor the pain in the body of Christ. The body of Christ is exposed so much that we need rich women and rich men. And that's why I told the church this year I'm praying for God to make them people that can have money. So you can help me to remove this shame from the body of Christ. Media houses should be begging men of God to come to talk something in the TV stations and their radios. But now men of God are paying to go and preach in TV and on radio. Order should not be that way. They should be begging men of God, come and speak a word on our radio and our TV. But now we pay to go there because of lack of money. Am I communicating here? 
There is shame in the body of Christ. We need the Joseph of Arimathea anointing. I said, I will not allow the man of God to walk like this. The church of God cannot look like this. Now, lack of money. Now, what? Lack of money. The body of Christ is in shame. Because the Bible says, Money answered. You see those things you see, those ones money can answer. I want to ask you a simple question. A very simple question. Sit down. Very simple question. We have some men of God even in this country. And I want to give, let me give an example of an outsider because if I use this country, I know some of them, they follow me, they will crucify me after this. Some of them I preach like this, I didn't know they, they are men of God that followed until I met that bishop who told me I follow you every day. He told me, sir, even me have a dream to be interpreted. Can I ask you a question? Do you think a governor in Nigeria can do a meeting for pastors at Oyede Bogos? If a governor wants Oyete Po's opinion, he will go to Oyete Po. Do you think it's because of his God? It's because of his money. You are missing it. So don't be deceived. There are pastors who are not as big as Oyete Po, but they carry God. The difference is what? And politicians have a way of humbling you. Once they know you are poor, you will come. One day we went to Babu Awino's office I was, when I was in Embakasi. He said, by, by 7 a.m., everybody's here. Me, I came 7.30. That's my, Robert is my name. <laughs> 7.30, I'm arriving. They say, man, of God, you are late. You are late. Mweshinua. Mweshinua, nika sema, wawo nako wapi? He said, mesema, wako hafa, kariba nakunu ya chai. Mumekapa, muna moja nakunu ya chai. Hakikuja muniite, na mini kashuka. Guys, you see, nika nakunu ya chai uko chini. When I was taking tea, I met one of my daughters who I prayed for her. She used to work at Maradaima. Yo. Kuna mahali, hapo kuna hii mahali, barabara ime, this side. Opposite yo, mwoli mejengu hapo. There used to be something there. And she was the HR. Now we prayed and God gave her. She, I think she's now, she's now the head of finance or something. Something who could guess. So when I entered like this, she saw me coming. So there were two ladies. I saw some people looking down. I said, ah, God, my sins are before me. Oh. <laughs> Somebody have seen my sins. Oh. Somebody is here. So I went and sat down with Apostle Mita. This is my good friend those days. So we catch him even they came. I said, man, God, we saw you here. I said, wow. So who are you? He said, I'm so and so. I'm the one you prayed for. Remember? I said, ah, remember, remember. Ah, God bless you. He said, anything you take, tell them to bring the bill. I said, okay. And please, if you don't, before you leave, my office is behind here. I said, it's okay. <coughs> so, we went, we, you know, even if you want to take tea now, you can take something, isn't it? <coughs> we are not talking now. <coughs> so, <coughs> ah, now, now your daughter is in the house, isn't it? I said, now give me something better. What is it? Will I die and my daughter is here? Hey, you have to give me something better. So, I felt good. So, when we finish, uh, she said, I'm, I'm leaving because my, I'm I don't know my boss or whatever, but please, once you have, just just call me. She came and picked us. We enter her office, and she said, "Prophet, that you came to my office. I'm sorry, I lost your number." And I had to ask myself, when I was praying for you, you always had my number. Now, when my prayer has been answered, now you lost my number. Now, are you seeing the mystery in life? You see the mystery of life. Ah, now you lost my number. But I say as well, so. She went to the account. I think she was getting some cash. Then she put 30,000 in my hands. She said, man, I'm going to speak a word in this office. <clears throat> then I spoke a word and I left. So, you know, I'm going back to Babu's office. I'm a rich man, isn't it? Yeah, so if you give me that 1,000, it's okay. If you don't give me that 1,000, it's okay. So I can wait for you if I wish. If I don't wish, I can go. <clears throat> you see what lack of money can do. But the one that lack 1,000, they only have 300, they are transferred their guru they will sit religiously and wait. It's not because they are disciplined. They are disciplined. They are not disciplined. They are disciplined. So when I came back, when I came back, I'm told he just entered. He came and still left this. You were waiting here for one hour. He still entered. I said, if he calls you, call me. I went down again. I, I finished the, 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 the elevator. They called him, man of God, he's requesting we go in. 
Egypt. The reason why these people waited for it, some of them were bishops. Senior, those are you fear. This me, you see me like this. Is this my body? Lack of money. Lack of money. Lack of money. In the body of Christ. That's why the government will mess. And there's no man of God you respect will open their mouth and talk. For two reasons. Either they are too angry, they are expecting for something, or they have been given something so they cannot talk. But if everybody was well blessed by God in their own ways, they don't fear anything. That's why Joseph would collect man to betray Jesus. A rich man doesn't behave like that. The church is now quiet, isn't it? Hallelujah. Do you know why people argue when giving is taught? Because of poverty. Excuse me, Pastor, I'm going to now give you a Last time I was here, I was This time I was here, I was here. I was here. I was here. I was here. You say, God will bless you, sir. Next week, preach another one. Hello? Because giving is not your problem. It's your weakness. You can give like anyhow. Because giving is what? It's blessing. There is shame in the body of Christ. And that shame has been brought because of lack of money. It needs a man like Joseph of Arimathea that can come and bargain with the king and say, remove our Messiah, he cannot be here. We need to, bar we need to bury him religiously. We need to give him befitting burial. Our master cannot be lying here like this. I have a tomb, I can put him. I have linen, I can cover him. I have money, I can prepare his burial. But if you're a poor man, you go there, the king will ask you questions. Can you take care of this one? Do you know he's a public figure? Can you give me a good burial? Do you want to bring shame to the state? They told me last time that a one Muslim can build a mosque and then call that mosque after his name. Musjid, Ar 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 Musjid, Musjid Musa. Then you think it's Musa, Moses. It's the Musa that built. One Muslim can build a mosque and call it Musjid Al Maria, Al I don't know what. Are you talking here? But it takes 1,000 members. To build a church in Mabati, which costs 200, 300,000, which somebody can take a loan and do, but you can take a loan for a boyfriend. Now, Mnulie Gari, na ende na kuwache na wema na mukemwingine. But you can never take a loan to build the altar that fights for your family and for your life. But after they have used your money, you saw a woman in it, you can come back to the same altar and cry to God on the same altar. Rambe kifanyi unafini ya luftatu kwa mkono ya pastor. They shame in the body of Christ. Can I talk like I feel it? See the way our church is looking now. You still want to hear God. God has not yet spoken, but you can see with your physical eyes. That God will not talk. Now the judge is not happy now. <laughs> now the judge is not happy. You buy a, a woman a phone, then he used to chat another man. The day you see it, now you are angry. The best dress you bought her, she's using it to go and visit another man for a date. But when people were giving in church, you didn't have the money. God is saying, I know how to deal with you. I will teach you a lesson. Now the judge is not happy now. No, you are not happy again. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody here? There is shame in the body of Christ. What we need are people that can say I will stand in the gap. I don't care what people will say, but I will make it better. So that tomorrow the same altar can fight for my family. Let me, let me leave that one. Let me leave it. If I go like that, nobody will give me a friend. Am I talking to somebody here? But may God make you a kingdom financier. May God make you a kingdom financier. I say, may God make you a kingdom financier. May God make you a kingdom financier. That you remove shame from the body of Christ in the name of Jesus. 
Number 14. The work of the disciples is to see what their pastors say come to pass. That's the lesson number 13 or number 14. 13. It is the work of the disciples to see what their master said come to pass. I want us to finish now. We will, we will continue on Sunday with this one. It is the work of the disciples, of members, to see what their master said, what their pastor said come to pass. Once your man of God said, we want to see screens, big screens here, write it somewhere and begin to think, how can I make that come to pass? Read verse 62 of the same chapter 27. 62 of the same chapter 27. It is their work to make sure it is coming to pass. Once your man of God said, we are doing this, begin to be disturbed. How can we do it? That's a lesson I've learned. Take it very quickly. On the next day, which followed the day of preparation, uh -huh. the chief priests and Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, uh -huh. saying, Sir, S saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive how that deceiver said after three days I will rise. We remember how that liar said he will rise. Therefore command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Command that they protect that tomb. They will come and collect that body. Lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people he has risen from the dead. So the last de deception will be worse than the first. Hold it there. We want that tomb guarded for three days and three nights lest the disciples come to make his words come to pass. Now this side is not hearing me. Lest the disciples comes and make his words do what? Because they will steal the body and say he was risen. The work of a disciple is to bring to manifestation what their master said. If Jesus will be resurrected by God, glory to God. If God will not bring him out of the tomb, we will bring him out. Because what kind of shame will befall us after three days he was not resurrected? Where will we hide our faces? So if God resurrect him, glory to God. If God wait, we will do it. And that's why the tomb was guarded by glory to God. Even when they guarded it that way, God still came through. Well, that bit I will preach on Sunday. Let me not close. Am I communicating here? So it's the work of the disciple to make sure what their master said does what? Come to pass. And that's why the boss will sit you down in the boardroom, give you the target of the month, the target of the year. Are we together? And then he goes back to his office and wait for reports. Is it so? So it's your work to meet your targets. Is it so? Even in church, that's how it should be happening. We are doing the floor. How much does it cost? It costs this much. You sit together. So since it costs this much, how much can I give? How much can you give very quickly? How can we do it? We need it done. Because we cannot let our master down. That's the lesson I learned. Number 14. Or number 15 now. Number 14. People you helped today, they can betray you tomorrow. And behave as if they've never seen you before. The people you help today can betray you tomorrow and behave as if they have never seen you before. This is life. When you see such, accept and move on. There's nothing you can do about it. If they betrayed Jesus, who are you? If they, can let, if they let Jesus down, who are you? Number 15, the people you sacrificed your life for can prefer other people for you when better things comes. The people you sacrifice your life for can prefer other people for your sake when they see better things. You can work for a boss for many years with loyalty, when an opportunity presents itself, they will run the interview and employ somebody from outside and leave you instead of promoting you to the same position and bring somebody else to earn more money than you who has been loyal there for 12, for 13, for 15, for 20 years. You are working that way thinking that when better things come, they will promote you and give you that thing. When better things come, they will bring people they think are better and give those better things and leave you there. That is life. A woman or a man can date another one for four years, ten years. 
And when the other one's time failed for marriage, they will leave that one. They married for they dated for 10 years. And now marry a better one. But when they were staying with you for 10 years, so I don't know were you was. That's why I hate this thing. I've been dating this man for six years or five years. Are you in course? Is it school? Because the more years you date this man, the more break you will have. If you date somebody for six years, for six months, one year, pem, if they misbehave, you go your way, they go their way to hell. Do I care? You lose nothing, I lose nothing. But you date six years, you, even your grandmother knows them. You have been posting them on your Facebook, on your status. Everybody knows this is your girlfriend, this is your boyfriend. We are doing fundraiser in church. The reason you cannot bring money is because you are paying a loan you took for a boyfriend. Man of God, I'm servicing a loan. But you're not telling us where that loan went to. We cannot see that loan in your life. You bought him the latest phone. So when you sit with him somewhere, when he put his phone on the table, people will know you're also dating some people. If you're not dating this year, yet take no things. Shout fire. Now you're not happy again. Shout fire. So you are trying to bring his standards. Let him dress like my man. Hello? Let me buy him some nice jeans. Some nice... Hello? So you are saying we are raising money. How many people can give 10,000? Man of God, you know me, I'm servicing a loan. Your mother did not see the loan. Your father did not see the loan. It's life. And I pray men will not, will not throw me with stones after this service. Because if I pray like that, one day I preach, one day men did not give me offering. Shout I hear. Shout I hear. In life, people you can sacrifice in them. The same people will prefer other people. Jesus gave himself for people. Healing their sick, doing everything. But when decisions were to be made, they preferred a thief for Jesus Christ. Is that true? They said, give us Barnabas. Take this one and we crucify him. Barnabas who have been stealing from them is the one they accepted. The one that has been healing their sick is the one they rejected. That is life. And the second last one. People will always talk bad about you. When you spend money in church or in the life of a man of God. When you are spending money in church or in your man of God, people will always talk bad about it. Don't be surprised. Mama gonna kiburi. Bele mbele mingi tu. Na figure kuna gitu. Wacha hata sisi tulikuwa hapa tulikuja mbele yake. Hata choka tu. Tumeona wengi walikuja hivyo. Walikimbia hiyo mbio wakachoka. Hata huyu anachoka tu. A woman came with a bottle of alabaster with expensive oil and she broke it before Jesus and people begin to complain. Am I saying the truth? And everybody say, how can you buy for a man of God such expensive perfume? Hiyo pesa nungenua na viti kanisani. Uwe ni kama viti azitoshi. Perfume, 50,000. Do you have brains? Are you seducing him? You that feel 50 is important to buy seats, why have you not bought one? You want your man of God to wear uh, uh, refill. Yamea. Anafanya hivi. Alafi na chora inabaki kama chora nguo hivi. Hello? So if if I'm doing refill now I'm a man of God. So if I'm wearing 50,000 on I know I'm ta. A woman broke expensive oil. Very expensive. Jesus said this woman is very prophetic. Though she's a whore, but she's very prophetic. Her name must remain in the book of, of record. Even pastors like me who are born again must preach and remember prostitute on the pulpit. Because of her giving, not because of her prayer. Prayer warriors alone. Not because of how much she was praying, how much she gave. Jesus said, remember prostitute when you are preaching. Even those who preach repentance and holiness, they still mention the name of a prostitute. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying here? When you put your hands to do something in church, be ready to be attacked by the same people from the same church. But don't care. My name must enter the archives of this ministry. I don't care. I don't care what people will say. Jesus said, wherever you preach, remember this woman's name. I thought we should not talk about prostitutes on the, on the pulpit. Hello? 
How should you tell me to mention prostitute on the pulpit? Because of the act of giving. So anytime I learn as a lesson man of God, as a man of God, whenever you put your heart to do something great for your man of God, people will misinterpret you, but don't care. If somebody says, people will talk, ask them, but do I care? A man of God approached me when we were moving here. Can I be a man of God? Are you sure Mutaweza Kulipa Garama here? Can I say, but do I care? Is it my house I'm going to build there? Tell me, I'm going to build there. I'm going to build there. Hello? Where are you? Where are you? Hello? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Are you bold enough to take decision to do the right thing? Even when people are thinking contrary. The man was told by the wife, when you sit there, be careful, don't judge anyhow. Are you bold enough to do the right thing even when people are thinking contrary? Glory to God. Glory to God. Because the woman you are rejecting today may be a byproduct of something glorious tomorrow. When God is finally done with that woman, he can, that woman can be a treasure that people will admire. The man you are rejecting today may be a byproduct of something glorious tomorrow. When God is done with him, you may admire that person. Be careful. So I hear. The last, the second last one, or the last one for today. 26 verse number 10 of Matthew. Fight always to do the right thing. Regardless of who is watching. Fight always to do the right thing. Regardless of what people are saying. Our time is up. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, When Jesus was aware, he told them, why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work for me. Why are you troubling this woman that is just doing a good thing for me? These people you are saying this money would have helped. These orphans. Have you not been with them before? The Bible is very clear. Have you not been with these widows before? You have been working with me for three years. Now I'm about to die in two days. Is when you want to tell me that their widows and orphans will be helped. How many have you been saying with them before? This woman is not born again. She has received a revelation to come and pour an expensive oil on me significantly for this season to prepare me for what I'm going for. I pray this Good Friday will bring something good in your life. Rise up on your feet. I pray this Good Friday will bring something good in your life. I pray this Good Friday will bring something good in your life. I say, I pray this Good Friday will bring something good in your life. Lift up your hands and say, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power of the cross. By the power of cross. I declare my family is being free. I declare my family is being free. By the power of the cross. By the power of cross. I declare my life is free. I declare. Free. By the power of the cross, the power of cross, I declare my life is free. I declare my life is free. From today, I declare freedom in my finances, in my finances, in my family, in my family, in my career, in my career, in that which I do, in that which I do. From today, from today, whatever my hands shall find to touch, whatever my hands shall find to touch, it shall prosper. It shall prosper. It shall prosper. It shall prosper. I decree and declare. I declare and declare. By the going throughs of Jesus. By the going throughs of Jesus. I am healed. I am healed. I am restored. I'm restored. I am free. I'm free. I am delivered. I'm delivered. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every addiction. Every addiction. In my life. In my life. Every addiction. An addiction. In my brother's life. In my father's life. In my sister's life. In my sister's life. In my mother's life. In my mother's life. In my father's life. In my father's life. I declare. I declare. By the works of the cross. By the works of 
cross. Our family is free. I am free. I'm free. I'm free. Let our voice and be to declare freedom in the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, I declare my life free. I declare my life free in the name of Jesus. I declare freedom in the name of Jesus. I declare freedom in the name of Jesus. I am free by the blood of Jesus. Freedom. My family is set free. In the name of Jesus, I declare myself free. In the name of Jesus. La kosha pandara kosa pandara zi. Le kosa kapande rika zoka pashara pande. I decree and I declare freedom upon my life, upon my family. Shaka bala haso kalabadi. In the name of Jesus, freedom upon my life. Freedom upon my life. In the name of Jesus. Kalabra haso namala ba. Ya kosa pashara pose kapayanda. Freedom. Freedom in the name of Jesus, I declare freedom. Let there be freedom in my finances. Let there be freedom in my health. Let there be freedom in my marriage. Let there be freedom in my ministry. I declare freedom everywhere in my life. In the kosha pandara soka pa, ya kosa kama yanda na kosa yanda bosha pa. Freedom is my portion. In the name of Jesus, freedom upon my family. Freedom, 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 freedom. I declare freedom. I declare freedom. I declare freedom. I am free from sickness. I am free from calamities. I am free from sickness. In the name of Jesus, I declare my family are exempted from sickness. In the name of Jesus, my people are exempted. In the name of Jesus, freedom, freedom upon my life. Ungozo. 